Hi, this is Christoph Schwarz with Click, and today I would like to talk to you about real-time updates. This is really a hot topic. Actually, let me step back and put a little bit of theory before we do the real-time update. Click actually has the paradigm that all data that shall become part of an analysis must be loaded into that app. So the only two exceptions to this paradigm are actually direct discovery, where SQL queries are fired live against the dataset, or server-side extensions, also known as analytical connectors, for example to R and Python, you can enrich a hypercube object with data live queried from that analytical connection. And as of 2019 and onwards, there's ABDI Advanced Big Data Indexing. There are two things where you can challenge that paradigm. You can think differently about the definition of an app. So maybe it's just a temporary container of data, so-called session apps. Or even if it's persisted and it's an app with UI on top of it, you can use some smart load techniques like incremental load, binary load, partial reload, or what we are talking today, pushing data with Enigma. So what happens if you create an app? So the first time, it's pretty obvious, you created the app, it loads the full data and saves the app and then you can use it in the sense client or in a mashup respectively. But what happens the next time? When you reload the app, the first thing it does, it flushes everything it had. So no matter what you loaded before, you're starting greenfield data-wise. And then you load again, and it's a full load, the data, and it's updated, it saves the app, and the front-end updates, you can use it in the client. What you could do actually is to store the data into QVDs, so the next time you do a reload and the data has been flushed, you put in one interim step and first load the data from the QVDs before loading the delta from the source. Of course, only if there is a delta load possible. Then it saves the app, again, it's updated in the client. So this takes a little bit of coding, like store commands, and uh, you need to get like the latest updates out of the QVDs, slice it into a where condition when you fetch new data and stuff. So it's a little bit of overhead here. Um, it, there's also one other technique, and that is the concept of binary load. A binary load means you take an app and it could be the app that you're just reloading itself. So it takes the latest version of it that it had on hard drive, loads the entire data model at once and then load the delta and then save the app. It starts with flushing the data but it's quickly getting the entire data set from the previous step using that binary load. All those Reloads are following the standard reload process. That means it starts with the flushing of the data. But there is a second mode of loading data and it's not available as an option in the client, in the script editor, only via API. And that is called the partial reload. And this keeps the previous data and it listens to separate commands in the load script. So actually you have to use instead of load and something, you have to use add load to make this work. And that can directly load the delta because it kept the previous data set and then it saves the app and be good. So today we are actually pushing the data and the concept here from opening the app, keeping previous data, making an add load and then saving the app. How does that look like? I'm starting here a brand new app and I'm loading this app for the first time, let's say, and all it does is create an empty table. It's zero lines of data, but it created three fields and I also have a front-end object that visualizes in the table all these three columns and it says zero records. Now I have prepared a script in JavaScript and I'm using Node.js to, to trigger it off. What this does is actually it gets access to the server using the port 4747 and Enigma.js, the engine API, and it's adding to the existing table some data. 
and this is what you need to update and uh, specify. I have here an array of objects and the objects define a key and a value. So I want to add to the table my table. In this particular app, I would like to add foo age 12 and fa age 14.3. You can also leave a timestamp if you want and now let's fire this off. So I'm using Node.js and it creates for me that piece of script. It concatenates two lines. So that is line number one. That is line number two because I had two lines here in this object and it's already updated in, in the client with no refresh. So let's do that once again. And it's there. And it's there. So this works basically instantly because the app size is just a few kilobytes. So uh, let's start with um, a couple of millions of rows and see how long the save needs here. I'm bypassing the building of the search index to save some precious time here. You can do this with create uh, index on reload equal to zero. Now we have already three millions of records. It will take a little bit longer now to push that new data in. Now it's saving. And you can watch this here. And it's there. And also the refresh takes a little while. Okay, let's have a quick look here again at this uh, at the script and add something different. So let's get one last insert. It's Jesus in the age of 15. Um, save this and push the data. Have a look on the browser. So it's still saving, still working on it. The browser is still responsive until the point when the new data has been saved, which is exactly now. And now the object refreshes and there is now a little overhead until the new record is in and it's just here. One thing that I want to mention though is this approach does not persist the push data anywhere else than in the app itself. That means when you reach a standard reload sometimes in the future, and it does the flushing of the data, such rows which you just pushed are gone again. So to avoid this, either create QVDs after receiving those data rows or query the raw data again from the source. All right, with that, um, I hope this delivers some new ideas of pushing data into Click. It communicates via Enigma with Click Sense server. If you don't know where to find Enigma GS, go to Click Help or go to GitHub where you can find all documentation around Enigma. Just to mention here the prerequisites for running this piece of code, I ran that code on the ClickSense server itself and it takes a little bit more of a preparation to run it from outside the server. And you can find all those prerequisites under the link shown here on my GitHub. With that, we conclude this video. If you like my videos, please subscribe and then see you on the next video.